welcome to September's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is intersection of two arrays two. Given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, return an array of their intersection. Each element in the result must appear as many times as it shows in both arrays, and you may return the result in any order. Here we can see the intersection is going to be 2, 2. So notice that we can have duplicates. We're not just counting one number by itself. Just got to make sure that this number is in here as well as this number is in here as well. If we had an extra two in here, that wouldn't count because there's only two twos here. Okay, so we obviously want to use a hash map. Uh, there's a couple follow-up questions after, but let's first solve this. What we'll do is create a counter object. We're going to call it C, and we'll just take one of these, either nums1 or nums2, doesn't matter, and put it into our counter. After that, we'll set our output to equal an empty list, and we'll say for number in nums2, We'll check to see if this amount in our counter object is greater than zero. And if it is, that means we have at least one of these numbers inside nums2 or nums1. So we will output that into our, append that to our output. And then we're going to decrease our counter by one here. So that way we won't return uh, duplicate numbers that don't appear as many times. After that, just return the output and that should be it. So let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So this is going to be an O of N time complexity as well as O of N. It's actually O of N plus M time, uh, times comp uh, time complexity and O of N space. Now, uh, the follow-up questions are, what if the given array is already sorted? How would you op optimize your algorithm? So if it was sorted, probably using a hash isn't necessary. What we can do is have a two-pointer solution and just iterate down both our arrays until we reach the end of one of them. And we'll just increase the pointer if one of them is greater for each side. So what I mean by that is let's just have an i and j pointer here. i is going to be referring to nums1 and j is going to be referring to nums2. We'll say while i is less than length of nums1 and j is less than length of nums2. What we'll do say if nums1 of i, let's say it's less than nums2 of j, then let's increase our i pointer. Else if nums1 of i is greater than nums2 of j, let's oops, increase the j pointer. Else, that means these numbers are equal, so that means let's add it to our output. Either one, nums1 or nums2 of i, and we'll increase both pointers because we've counted them now. And then we turn the output. So let's set the output up here. And let's make sure this works. Okay, it looks like it's working. Oh no, okay, um, hmm. I may have flipped this by accident. Oh right, we have to sort it. <laughs> okay, sorted nums one, sorted nums two, because we're making the assumption that these are sorted. Let's try that again. And that works too, even though we do this sorted here, so that would be n log n. But if it was if it was pre-sorted already, obviously this algorithm would be better because it's constant space and it's going to be um, the minimum of m plus n time complexity. Now there are a couple more follow-ups, like what if nums one size is small compared to nums two size? Well, if that's the case, then probably this algorithm would be better. Um, but it really depends on whether it's sorted or not. And as for this question, what if elements nums2 are stored on disk and the memory is limited? Well, uh, maybe we'll do a check to see which... Well, I mean, if nums2 stored on disk, then we already put nums1 into a counter object, right? So the first algorithm would be better. Now, I could be wrong about that, so you could feel free to correct me in the comments. But otherwise, this is the solution, so... Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.